Today's news poll had bad news for the Albanese government, but great news for Australia because support for The Voice, Labor's kind of average lonely parliament, has dropped to new lows, just 41% yes now and 48% no, with 11% of voters still unsure. Now, we'll talk later about why that might be, this huge drop. But for now, here is just one reason. It seems to me this voice campaign is already creating more division and not less. I don't see reconciliation, do you? I mean, I just see more and more demands. Now, two more sad examples of that last weekend. Now, we've already had one council in Western Australia last week. We talked to Amir there. Uh, it was told... It was told by a local Aboriginal group it couldn't plant trees in a bit of land that had been fire burned. Now, this Greater Geraldton Council was so scared of the huge fines in West Australia's new Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act for disturbing, you know, Aboriginal heritage that it halted the planting until the government said, no, 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 that's a big misunderstanding. You go ahead. Yet now, on the weekend, just a couple of days after that case I told you about, Two land care groups, also in West Australia, were also stopped from planting shrubs, uh, these ones along the Canning River. After this man, David Collard, who identifies as Aboriginal, said they first had to pay his group $2.5 million, his Aboriginal group. Now, again, the state government later said, well, no, 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 again, a misunderstanding. The land care volunteers, they were fine to plant their shrubs too, no need for $2.5 million. But these two groups have meanwhile been too scared to take that risk. It's just completely uh, unrelated, their claim for this money and uh, the activities that we were uh, we, we had organised for the weekend. Um, so uh, it, it, we had to adopt the precautionary principle. Uh, it's a very sensitive issue and uh, simply put a hold on those two activities. Joining me is the Mayor of Canning, where a lot of these plantings were about to happen. His name, Patrick Hall. Patrick Hall, thank you so much for your time. Three tree plantings now cancelled, the two on the weekend, the one before, for fear of these new cultural heritage laws. Why all this fear and confusion? Uh, look, hi, Andrew, and thanks for inviting me onto the show. Look, uh, here in Western Australia, where the new Act uh, has come in, yeah, I think the implementation has been seriously uh, lacking. There's been an awful lot of confusion here in the community. But the City of Canning is one of four councils along the southeast corridor uh, of Perth that has formed an alliance many years or some years ago. Uh, and we do an awful lot of planting and a lot of uh, land care along the Canning River. And this has just uh, caused... Uh, a real mess, uh, and obviously that's why I'm speaking to you this evening. I'm staggered, you know, that someone could be wanting two and a half million dollars from groups of volunteers to plant trees and shrubs. I mean, I thought that was a good thing to do. Do you know this David Collard and his group that said, you know, pay us two and a half mil if you want uh, to do th this planting? Well, just to clarify, what actually happened, David uh, was, I believe he's no longer with the... Uh, this has all happened very suddenly, and I'm getting this second-hand. Suddenly, since this story broke, uh, David Collard is now no longer the chief executive officer of the Wadjuk Corporation, and that's a corporation that was, I understand, set up under the Act to help administer the Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act here in WA. So suddenly... He is no longer uh, with this group. Uh, but the reality is he wasn't actually demanding the money from these environmental groups. He, uh, the uh, group of councils I'm involved in had secured $10 million in federal funding, which has not yet been paid, but it's on the way. He learned of that, and we understand what I've been told. He made a claim of, for $2.5 million, and uh, he communicated to these groups that until that claim had been settled with the federal government, till the government uh, had actually settled that claim with him, uh, that they should down tools, essentially, and not conduct any plantings there. And, of course, Andrew, these are um, volunteering organisations. They don't have the resources That's to run crazy. out and uh, talk to lawyers. And if they're told by the chief executive officer of an Aboriginal corporation, uh, they are going to do what is right and what's respectful, and I understand their position, and they will down tools, and they did. And so would we as a local government. So uh, the fact that I think uh, the chief executive officer of an Aboriginal corporation uh, had apparently no idea of his responsibilities under the Act, that's what we're being told by government. If that's the case, 
well, then there really is uh, a misunderstanding, a miscommunication around this uh, act and a lot of confusion. Well, this is the thing, Patrick Hall. The fact is, you say, this corporation was, uh, was uh, uh, you know, entitled under this act to take action, to, you know, to, to help enforce this new Heritage Protection Act. He understood it himself to have this power. The government's saying, no, 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 no. But it's like with the voice, you know, the government's saying, well, you know, it doesn't matter what's actually in the act, it's what we say, well, is it really, you know, all that kind of thing. It's this, it's this amping up of demands once the structure's in place. All very well now, but once, once it's in place, that's what worries me. When you've got this confusion already, where's it going to go after this? Somebody said to me uh, they wondered whether this was a glimpse into the future of Western Australia under this legislation. I, I don't share that view. I think that's scaremongering. But I, I think there is now a lot of alarm, uh, both at local government and also uh, in the community, around what this means going forward. And that uncertainty has caused a division and disunity uh, here, I believe, uh, is certainly not helping Aboriginal people. And, uh, you know, I made the point today earlier on Talkback Radio that, you know, my fear is uh, I feel very sorry for Aboriginal people today because unfairly a spotlight's been put on them and further scrutiny over Aboriginal people that I feel uh, wholly, uh, generally, uh, innocent parties here. And even David Collard himself, who I don't know, Andrew, uh, other than I met him about six weeks ago uh, over this issue, but um, he has been royally uh, thrust front and centre over this matter uh, and some would say thrown under the bus. But I'm not certain it's entirely his fault. Uh, if he didn't understand his obligations, well, then uh, perhaps it was an opportunity to sit him down and talk to him rather than, uh, you know, move him to one side. I'm, I'm not certain. I don't know what's happened. You're I don't a very forgiving wish to man, comment Patrick on it, Paul. But, You're you know, a I just don't very think... I, I feel sorry for David because... Collard tonight. <laughs> Oh, mate, but listen, I mean, it's that asking two and a half million dollars because volunteers want to plant plants must strike anyone as a very, very cheeky ask. Seriously. Uh, I don't Absolutely. know what he thought it's opportunity, isn't it? Just you know what? On the That's face people, of it. but isn't it? Patrick if, uh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> but this is the whole point. Patrick Hall, I really appreciate your time uh, and thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. But honestly, the good thing about the uh, West Australian Act is that a polit the politicians, because it's not in the Constitution, they can change it when it doesn't work, like it clearly isn't.